Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave from the Camera Store. Today we're talking about the brand new Lumix S85 1.8 lens by Panasonic. This is the latest lens from Panasonic. It's an 85 1.8 lens and it's a very small size of lens, which is great. It teams up very well with the latest camera they have, the S5. Now, 85 screams portrait lens. So we took the opportunity to go visit our good friends at Inner City Brewery and take some portraits of them. 85 millimeters is a great focal length for doing portraits and it's widely considered the perfect portrait length. There's a good reason behind that. When I'm taking head and shoulder portraits of somebody, it has a really nice compression. It tends to flatten out facial features a little bit. It doesn't accentuate anything. If somebody has a larger nose, for instance, it's not going to exaggerate that and it's really nice, but it also gives you a really nice working distance with your subject. If I was shooting with a two or 300 millimeter lens, I'm going to have great compression, but I'm going to be a mile away and be yelling at them to turn left, turn right, tilt their chin up or what have you. 85 millimeter, at a very comfortable distance and I'm getting a really nice look and at 1.8 aperture I'm achieving a very shallow depth of field which is really going to make my subject pop from the background. When you first pick up this lens you're going to realize how lightweight and small it is. It comes in at 355 grams and is just a little over three inches in length. Now when I was walking around Inner City Brewery today it was nice to have such a small package. Now, if you look at the results I was getting out of here, I'm very pleased with them. Now, part of that is the construction of it. We do have nine elements in eight groups featuring two ED elements, but we also have nine aperture blades that are circular. So we get this really nice, pleasing bokeh. Take a look at this shot and you'll see how these lights look so nice. They're really concentric circles and are very pleasing to the eye. I've been fortunate enough to have this lens for a little while now and able to use it in a couple of different shooting situations, including tobogganing of all things. We had some snow here in Calgary and my son and I went out sledding. Now, I was able to get some nice shots of him doing it, but I did notice it wasn't the fastest lens for autofocusing sports in action. I did miss a few shots, as you can see here, but the shots I did get, I was really impressed with. Now, it was a very cold day that day, despite what my son was thinking as he was running around without a jacket at one point. In the much warmer environment of Inner City Brewery, we were able to take some head and shoulder portraits and I had no trouble at all with the autofocus speed there. The S5 and its face and eye detection work great and I was really happy with the results I was getting with the autofocus there. Now it isn't the fastest autofocusing lens. You can see on our wall test here the difference between min and max isn't super fast. There are other lenses out there that certainly acquire focus much quicker but it's perfectly acceptable for this style of lens. I'm not really finding it's holding me back. Now this is a prime lens. It's not a zoom meaning that if I want to get the framing I want I need to physically move back and forth to the distance that I want to get the framing that I like and sometimes that's a bit tricky especially when you're indoors I don't have the space necessarily to achieve that so at the brewery I also brought along the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.2 lens on this shoot because I wanted some more environmental portraits where I couldn't back up far enough with the 85 and I wanted to get the entire scene the 35 was a nice option for that here's Eli working away or kind of working away with the squeegee in front of these great tanks with some good lighting behind them I thought it was pretty cool shot but showing at 35 gives us a much wider perspective now I wouldn't use the 35 for doing head and shoulder portraits necessarily because I'm going to get a little bit of distortion and the facial features aren't going to look quite as nice that's where I was going to switch to the 85 and get a different look completely in the same environment Speaking of Sigma, I also brought along the Sigma 85 1.4 Art Series lens. Sigma also makes the 85 f1.4 DGDN version that is almost 300 grams heavier and still twice the price. But it does give you an extra two-thirds of a stop of light gathering. Now, I didn't notice a huge difference between 1.4 and 1.8. As far as the aesthetics go, it's very minimal. I also found for focusing, it was great for portraits, but it was very sluggish when it came to tracking focus compared to the Panasonic. They seem to have dialed in this lens, especially with the S5. In working with this lens over the last few days, I really enjoy it and I think it pairs itself perfectly with the S5 and I'm glad that we're seeing some smaller lighter weight lenses come into play. Now, compared to like the Sigma, we have a lens that's half the price, half the weight, and it's a one-stop difference, but I'm not seeing that difference in the quality whatsoever. I'm really enjoying what this lens is giving to me. 
I like the fact that it also has a 67 millimeter filter threads. We have a nice wide focusing ring here and a really easy autofocus manual focus switch. I'm really glad that they've included weather sealing with this lens. When I was out shooting sledding with my son, I had no worry about snow being splashed onto the camera. Now we also have a nice minimum focusing distance at 2.6 feet. That allows me to photograph things like these cans, for instance, from inner city and it get a really nice effect to it. Uh, keep in mind minimum focusing distance, you are going to have very, very shallow depth of field, but it's kind of a cool effect to work with. Now, I, of course, want to know what you guys think of this lens. Do you like what Panasonic has got going with some smaller, lighter weight lenses? Do you hope to see some new future lenses like this that follow this trend? Make sure you leave comments down below. Follow us on Instagram and please subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll catch you again really soon. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you want to check out our latest episode, click up here. And if you're a Canadian and you want to shop local, check out the camera store down here.